Welcome to the very first episode of Gamer Vision. We have Tony from uh, Procedurally Generated with us. How's it going? Say hi, Tony. How's it going? going pretty good. And of course, myself from Just One More Level. Uh, we've been eagerly anticipating the launch of this show for a few months now. And Gamer Vision will be our platform for bringing talent uh, together to discuss the landscape of the gaming industry. And to kick off this wonderful new journey, we will be discussing E3, the importance of the convention, whether it needs to stay around, and what forms could benefit the legendary Electronic Entertainment Expo. Tony, I know that you did a lot of research for this going into yeah. the, this first episode. And so what are what are you, some of your thoughts on, on what you think will happen with E3? I, I know that it, it, it's coming back this summer, but... What do you think? Oh, well, there's no denying that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused some major upheaval over the last year. Uh, one of the biggest impacts of that was the cancellation of pretty much every major public event during the year. And the video game industry was, of course, no exception. Um, the pandemic, uh, it can be argued that E3 had seen some setbacks in the years prior. There was a lot of like dwindling um uh, expectations and people were speculating if E3 was even relevant anymore. Uh, and the, the pandemic of 2020 could have been seen as the death knell for E3 as a whole. Uh, it would sort of be replaced by the Summer Game Fest that was hosted by Jeff Keighley, and that took place between the months of May and August with uh, a bunch of different events, but the sporadic timing of many of those events wasn't received as well as some people had hoped. Uh, this year, though, Things seem to be slowly returning back to normal a little bit. Uh, and in April of this year, just a couple of weeks ago, it was confirmed that E3 will be back this year. The event will be a little bit different, though, uh, than it has been in the past, and it will be exclusively online, uh, which is, I think, you know, to be expected. Uh, it will take place yeah. in that traditional June time frame, which we've come to, to know and love. Uh, it will be held between June 12th and June 15th this year, which I believe is Saturday through Tuesday, or I think that's correct. It's not the usual uh, Monday or Tuesday through Friday this year. Uh, participants that have been confirmed as taking part are Microsoft, Nintendo, Square Enix, Take-Two, Capcom, Warner Brothers, Activision, Ubisoft, Sega, Bandai Namco, and Coke Media. Some key players in the, in the video game industry won't be attending E3 this year. Sony has elected to skip the event, and Konami as well, after originally being part of the press releases saying they would be there, did come out uh, later, or a couple weeks ago, and say, or last week, and say that they would not be ready in time for E3, so they won't be showing anything. Uh, Sony is probably going to be doing their own thing entirely. It has also been confirmed that the show will be free for anybody that wants to watch anything that's happening. We'll have, uh, of course, more information about the event as we get closer to the start of E3, because I'm sure news will be coming out like crazy over the next few weeks. Which, uh, you know, kind of going back to the, the thing of just things being like going back to normal, that's kind of how things were throughout the, the existence of E3. So it was kind of yeah. weird over the span of, of, of last year. Of course, you know, we, we all understand with the, with the pandemic going on, very difficult to be able yeah. to put on in-person shows, uh, mainly because like it would cause all kinds of issues and, you know, you know health ramifications yeah. of that yeah. but i think you and i have kind of talked about it before where you know e3 was very much you know it it provided a strong structure mm -hmm. like you you knew when e3 was you knew when like announcements were going to be made and having that spread out across the, the the year that we had with you know 2020 and even kind of going to like gd or uh, ces of 2021 yeah. You know, you, you have all these like smaller announcements throughout the year and it just the, the it seems like there's a lot of negativity around it because there's just so much expectation that there's going to be so many announcements. And then it's like, oh, here's three games and we're supposed to be excited for this. And yeah. So it, it will be I, I think it'll be nice to see E3 return uh, in, in some form or fashion. Uh, well, I guess with it being a, vir a virtual show. Um, It'll be nice to start seeing that, 
not return to normal because you know I I miss the press conferences I miss the 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 big uh, just the the big display of everything going yeah. on yeah definitely uh, it just, I I every single year you know for ten or fifteen years like I I just couldn't wait for E three because there's just the overwhelming you know news that 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 comes from the convention. So it'll it'll be nice to see that back in in the, in its in its form, and it looks like a lot of companies are jumping back on board. That we're kind of starting to wonder whether or not, you know, kind of earlier with what you were saying, was E three really necessary yeah. anymore? Well, I think one of the things that we really sort of figured out throughout the year last year was that all of those little mini events tried they they tried to hype them up as big announcements every time and that got people's expectations you know so high for all of these you know announcements and a lot of them ended up falling flat and people were you know disappointed yeah. because there weren't these really huge games i mean there was a lot of good stuff that was shown off but there wasn't anything just huge um, and I think people, despite all of the uh, naysaying over the last couple of years about E3, really realized that without that one big, really tentpole event to, you know, sort of build the calendar around, they missed that. And they yeah. didn't realize they missed it until it was gone. Um, and we're starting yeah. to see now a lot of people starting to get really hyped because E3 is back. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think for the for the most part, a lot of people like the you know Jeff Keighley show last year, um, kind of what like you know it just with it being spread out across a couple of months, it just didn't have the the same impact as as what E3 mm -hmm. or you know, Gamescom and that kind of stuff. Like you know, I, I think a lot of people do miss the uh, that that roadmap of the the announcements, releases, getting into the Christmas holiday season. You know, just that that very just i mean it, a very structured uh distribution of, of news and games and just you know, it just with without that structure things have people started expecting so much out of even like small announcements or mm -hmm. just thinking oh they're they're gonna they're gonna slip something in there they're, they're gonna they're gonna surprise us with, with with something huge and when when it doesn't happen it's you know you just see all the negativity yeah, and I, I really personally, I love that flood of information. The first E3 that I remember watching anything about was 2006 uh, with the launch of the Wii. Um, and every year I started looking forward Revolution. to just that, that just huge amount of information that you were going to get. You were going to see, you know, hundreds of news articles over a week about new games that were coming out. And it got people really excited and talking about everything uh and then when you do that you have all the other announcements spread out throughout the year and people don't necessarily need to get as hyped about those and your expectations are lowered a little bit for the smaller events when you've got that huge yeah. huge massive event to talk about yeah and that's i, I think that's definitely going to be one of the biggest things that will i i hope really improve a lot of the surrounding nature of what's going on with, with the video game industry because it seemed like for the last year just with everything going on you know it, it seemed like no company was necessarily safe from yeah. just expectations um you know if, if you went any amount of time without having a like a and an, any type of announcement when you did have something that you started to hype up it just got turned to 11 and you know nintendo sony Microsoft, Square Enix, like all these companies, they even like they would start to try to like prepare people. Like mm -hmm. you know, we're 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 not going to be talking like going into the PS5 and Xbox uh, Series X and S launch. You know, Microsoft and Sony were both saying we're we're not going to really be talking much about about hardware. We're not going to really you know for months before like the actual launches of those platforms. And people still went into these you know these videos or these these pseudo conferences expecting yeah. to be surprised by something like that yeah i know uh e3 definitely has its place there is there is room there i think is a need for that one big event that people really get a chance to get excited for and i know the speculation is already starting the speculation is going to grow and grow and grow uh, as we get closer and closer 
to uh, that second week of June this year. Um, and with some of the players that we know are going to be there, are there any things that you're looking forward to, anything you would want from E3 this year, an announcement, a game, something uh, that, you're, um, that you'd like to see? Well, uh, since Square Enix will be there, I am full on like i i want to see something for final fantasy 16 yeah. um just the the next the, the next chapter with with final fantasy i, I know you know there's final fantasy 7 remake uh intergrade coming yeah. but you know, that that's great and all but I, I really when i when i saw the stuff for, for 16 that they're going back to kind of a, well not kind of going back to a fantasy setting um just i'm wanting to see more from from them as far as that title goes mm -hmm. and you know microsoft I, i'm i'm very eager I, i'm wanting to see what they do you know they've been buying up a lot of studios yeah. so i'm 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 wanting to see just kind of you know it's still a little early but i would like to see some some of, like starfield you know yeah. elder scrolls 6 uh and of course obviously Halo will obviously be there, so I'm I'm wanting to see what they do with the, the next installment of that as yeah, well. So, yeah. you know, but what what are some of the things that, that you're you're looking forward to? Uh, well, the things that I always look forward to most are the Nintendo announcements. That is my sort of primary platform. That's that's the the news that I get the most hype about. And the one thing I really want to see this year is a sequel to the biggest surprise from two or three years ago, and that is a sequel to Mario and Rabbids. <laughs> I, I, remem yeah. I remember when that game got leaked a few days before, and everybody was just going nuts about how bad that game was going to be. Even I was like that. I was like, I don't want a Rabbids game. I don't want Mario anywhere near the Rabbids. But... The first time they showed the game off, and you could see the passion from the dev team, Miyamoto was out there, the game looked fantastic, and I played it, it was my surprise hit of that year, and I am very eagerly anticipating a sequel to that game. I, I was I was happily surprised as well. Um, I did, I, Nintendo doesn't necessarily just allow their properties to go to just anybody that's true they don't they don't just allow anybody to, to to mess with their stuff but when when i saw the the mario and rabbits thing i was like oh well i mean i guess there's the first first time for everything i mean i'm I'm not expecting much out of it and then it came out and just yeah well i guess pretty much anything nintendo touches it seems to it that's seems true to be a okay that's true but uh and i think you know E3 being, you know, re returning this year, uh, it's going to be great to see some of the, the shows. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to go all out and have the big presentations. You know, I, I know Nintendo's going to do their their yeah. Nintendo Direct stuff. Sony's not going to be there, but you know, Microsoft even even when Sony and Nintendo weren't doing big conferences, they still did a big conference. So kind of wondering just what what's in the, the pipeline for them, but. I, I think you know it, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a fun time. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and with everything going on, you know we've got new systems, new services out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm 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 wanting to see just what what happens next, and I I feel like E3 will be a great a great way to bring all that stuff back together. Absolutely. But uh, you know I I, I think that's a, a pretty good a pretty good spot for us to be able to kind of wrap it up on yeah. and. Um, a, this has been Tony and, and Jeff. We will see you all with our, our next episode of Gamer Vision. And I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Very much so.